This is the visitor center and the historic center of Yanbu. It is also a museum, super informative. We will show you the inside. Um, it is a beautiful area. As you can see, it's right along the coast. Um, lighthouse there in front. Huge, lovely promenade. Um, it is actually Saudi founding day. There are only four public holidays in this country and today is one of them so I think they're setting up for a nice festival there's lovely cafes right along the coast um, and Yanbu is a really really old town it actually predates Medina and we'll tell you a bit more about its history once we're inside but like I love these cafes in the old town and right on the Red Sea it's very lovely and you can see some of the old style architecture, the Hijazi architecture, and the window sheet, the window is called Rawashin, which help with ventilation, but also you could see outside while maintaining your privacy. Um, we're here in the daytime, and obviously, being a desert, these places tend to be more of late afternoon or evening vibes. Um, so, we'll have to come back and check them out a bit later and show you then. Welcome to the Yanbu Visitor Center, super informative, you can learn more about Yanbu from the Stone Age, um, so yeah, the different phases it's been through. So what I learned at Yanbu is that there's a lot of natural uh, springs with fresh water, that's why there's a lot of fruits and agricultural products grown over here. Here are some of the springs over here, there's quite a few of them. There's some rock art from ancient civilizations. We found some Stone Age tools. This is the Yanbu port. It, uh, it boomed uh, during the early times, I think, of Islam. The, it used as a, as a stopover for people performing the Hajj um, from Egypt and Morocco. A lot of information tells you before Islam all the different kingdoms that used to come here, the Sumerian, Akkadian, oh, even hieroglyphic writings to the 3rd millennium BC. This is from the Islamic era, AH after Hijra, so that's like the Islamic calendar, all the way to the 4th century, to tell you about the different Khalifas, um, prehistoric times, okay, this is taking it back to the Stone Age. And yeah, let me show you the outside of this place. I think the museum opened up or got renovated a year ago, as you can tell, part of the 2030 vision. And I'm gonna show it to you from the outside now to see the, how it looks. Okay, so this is, if you look outside, there's the port. Very beautiful. Um, just behind this is the old ballad. So they still have the historical ruins and yeah that's the sign Yanbu historical and this is the museum very very informative highly recommend and it's free okay so earlier I showed you the ground floor but I didn't realize there's much more to that so let me give you a tour of upstairs you've already seen that part so now we're going to see the part on top so oh, I forgot to mention when we entered the gentleman at the museum gave us a, like a chocolate date. This place is so informative. I'm, I'm glad this is my first stop, so now I'm more clued up about the place that I'm going to explore. So at least when I walk in the old city, I'll be able to understand the history and architecture more. So this tells you the origin of the place and the history. It's made up of six districts and shows you some pictures. This speaks about the architectural identity of this area, how the buildings were built close to each other, and um, distinct features such as the wooden windows and the benefits of it. And okay, this tells you about the coral stone that they used to build back in the day. The bricks were made from clay. So yeah really puts things into perspective because you can walk around and see these buildings but you won't really know much so if you come here first you'll be able to appreciate it when you walk through the old district okay so this tells you the most historical buildings of Yanbu 
the layout, a lot of details that I can't even find online. So this is fantastic. Now let me show you more. Let's go on this way. Defense fortification. A lot of places in Saudi Arabia have forts uh, for obviously defensive purposes. Tells you about the fort, um, the uses for it, and the towers. Also, important defense installation that were used to protect Janbu and its port. And you can still explore some of these. Uh, Runes. I think now some of them are runes, some of them are still intact. Okay, go this way. Let's see what's over here. Okay, that's staff only. I'm not going to go there. Let's go down again. Several architecture. Let's have a look over here. This explains all the markets, the night market, which we didn't get to do as yet. This tells you about the architecture again, the most important components of the house from back in the day. Um, let me show you this section. So this is very interesting. This part blew my mind. The agriculture, this place is so green. It's because Yanpu is characterized by its numerous valleys, fertile soil, and abundant wells in spring. It has almost 200 springs. Hence the name Yanbu, meaning spring. And that's why this place is so green. These are all the fruits that they grow. Dates, wheat, barley, lemons, grapes, tomatoes, etc. Then they tell you about, um, besides agriculture, people used to also hunt in Yanbu. They used to build boats from wood. They tell you about the details with the wood. And they used to um, use coconut yes they stitch the, uh, the boats together with strong strings made from fibers of coconut then let's see mosque this was very interesting they tell you about the famous yanbu mosque um it was named after it's called al shira which was one of the first battles that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, fought near Yanbu. And yeah, this mosque, I think it's been like reconstructed or restored. Maybe we'll check this mosque out. Is there anything else that I have to show you? Yes, I think there's another section. That's the economic activity. And let's see down here. Come to an end, Yanbu, the present and the future. Let's check it out. So the future, that looks wow. Yanbu today, okay, so Yanbu, uh, it's a port, I think, has to do with the petroleum industry. Population, 300,000. If you go in here, it tells you about the famous arts that they have, the dancers, the folk music, the handcrafts, and this, traditional dishes. We love trying local food wherever we go, because it's um, along the sea, you guessed it, it's seafood. And we want to try this out, called Sayadiya. Seasoned fish and rice cooked with fried onions. And it's one of the distinguished, distinctive dishes in this area, served in winter. It's kind of winter now. And traditional mixed with dish with conch, locally known as zanbak or sambak. Ooh, it sounds delicious. Cooked with tamarind sauce, added to it. Ooh, hopefully we get to try it. Hungry already. Um, so this is a mountain I want to climb. It's called Jabal, Mountain Radwa, and it's an ultra peak, meaning the topographic prominence from the bottom to the top is more than a thousand meters. So even though Jabal Sadwa is the highest at three thousand meters, this one here has uh, more topographic prominence, and there's a lot of springs around this mountain over here. A lot of guys go mountain trail biking, camping. Uh, four by four wing over there and yeah I think that's about it for now obviously more stuff will be here in the future this place is quite new and yeah that's the exit back outside Thank you.
العربي التي تستقبل سفن النقل وتجارة حلقة وصل بين جنبات العالم القديم ظل منهم ينبع عبر العصور المدخل الأهم للتجارة الصادرة من شبه الجزيرة العربية والواردة إليها وحمزة وصل بين غرب الجزيرة العربية ومصر وفي القرن السابع الهجري كان ميناء ينبع على موعد مع حقبة من الازدهار حيث أصبح الميناء الرئيس النافذة للمدينة المنورة على البحر المحمود قد وعد وتأمير الملاحة فيه والمقضاء على القرصنة المحلية وتشجيع تجار الهند والصين على الاعتماد عليه في الإبحار وقد أدى هذا الاهتمام إلى ازدهار ينبع تجاري وعمال بفضل هذا الميناء فتوسعت المدينة لتصبح مركزا حضاريا على ساحل البحر الأحمر للتجار والحجاج واحد اهم طرق الحج البحريه التي يقصدها حجاج مصر والمغرب I'm a famous sign, historical Yanbu. We do love history. And they're setting up some uh, events for tonight because it's Saudi founding day, a public holiday.